Hello, welcome back to the, the next installment here in our uh, video series about the introduction to the IDF to PH toolkit. Uh, I'm Ed May and uh, happy to have you with us. We're going to continue on our, our discussion here of fresh air ventilation systems and start to start to add uh, yet even more a little bit of detail to to our project here. Um, in particular, in this next uh, in this in this video, what I'd like to do is is focus on the question of fresh air ventilation flow rates, how we set the flow rates and the relationship between the flow rates in the PHPP and the flow rates in the Energy Plus model. Um, so the flow rates are obviously going to be key. In the last section, we built out our actual uh, ventilation system, and we talked about how the system efficiency, or we saw that the system efficiency was affected by things like insulation levels and duct lengths and unit efficiencies and the like, um, uh, which is obviously all very important. Uh, but but just as important to the overall performance of the building um, is, is the uh, is the fan speed or the flow rate that the that the uh, unit is actually working at. So that's going to be key both for the overall heating and cooling energy performance of the building, as well as the thermal comfort and of course the health of the space. So it's important to get our flow rates right for our project, and it's important for our model that we have the the accurate values in there when it comes to to these flow rates as well. So let's take a look at the PHPP first before we go to our grasshopper scene and let's see what kind of information the PHPP would like from us when it comes to when it comes to uh, ventilation flow rates. So I'm here in the ventilation or excuse me in the additional ventilation worksheet. Um, in the last video we saw how we, we update the ventilation unit and we can set the ducting and um, um, uh, on that same worksheet, up at the top of the worksheet, we, we saw um, in earlier videos that we, we get a, a detailed breakdown of all of the rooms which we have inside of our buildings. We have all of the rooms itemized uh, by room or, or, or by zone, however you chose to do it. Um, and they are entered here uh, line by line. We get the area, the volume, um, we get some uh, uh, flow rate information. We'll talk about where this information comes from, and then we get some some schedule information for those spaces as well. Um, and, and we get this sort of ternary uh, uh, scheduler where we have uh, three different reduction factors and three different um, uh, uh, operation times uh, that we can input here. Now we can certainly do more complex schedules in the non-residential uh, uh, worksheets in the PHPP. But for residential projects, it's typically sufficient to utilize this sort of simplified scheduler here. And so this is what we're going to show in these videos. Maybe in, in future videos, we'll show how to manage the uh, non-residential um, uh, schedules and, and configuration uh, in the PHPP. But for now, let's just stick with the resident, the simplified residential uh, inputs. And so what the, the calculator wants from us is basically how, um, how fast as a percentage of its maximum speed is the ERV going to be operating and for how long? And we can have the ability to input that in three different blocks here. So we have three different uh, sort of speeds and three different um, uh, time periods that we can enter. So we need to configure this on a room by room basis. So if we go back to our grasshopper scene here, we need some method of controlling these schedules and flow rates for each room. So I'm going to do some work on our um, interior rooms here. So remember way back in the very early sections, we built out some interior rooms using the PHPP rooms builder. And so we want to add a little bit more detail to this now at this point. Um, these rooms are going to hold on to all of this fresh air ventilation inf information that we apply. So we're going we're gonna to set this information back here at the rooms. So I'm going to give ourselves a little bit more room. So, so here before the fresh air ventilation system, we're going to make a little bit more space so that we can apply some additional information to our rooms. So if you remember, the room builder is going to create those rooms. We have all of our rooms here. We have the kitchen, a bedroom, hallway, and mechanical room. So the same list of, of, zone, of rooms that we have down here. Um, we, of course, have the geometry, which was built. Remember, we sort of adjusted the ceiling height for one of our, our rooms here, so we can sort of make these as detailed as we wish. And so one additional piece of information that I want to add is going to be the room flow rates. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to come up to 01, model, and I'm going to come down here to calculate ventilation flow rates. So if we want to calculate our own, if we want to apply our own custom flow rates to the various rooms in the project, we're going to do that using this calc vent flow rates 
um, a component. So I'm going to grab this and drop this onto the canvas. What kind of inputs are we going to take? We're going to take the honeybee zones and then we're going to kick out the honeybee zones. So this is yet another zone modifier. It's going to take in the zones, uh, adjust some values on the zones, and then output the zones with those modifications. It's also able to take in a couple of different inputs here. We'll look at these. The PHPP vent schedule is going to be the most important one that we'll take a look at right now. And then it's going to output some ventilation information. We'll see how we can use that in some later, later videos as well. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the Honeybee Zones output from the Room Builder to the Honeybee Zones input on this Room Ventilation Flow Rate Calculator. All right, so how are we going to configure this? How are we going to set this up? So we do need to pass in some additional information. So what information do we need to pass in? Well, this PHPP vent schedule. So this is what we want to set. We want to set the flow rate schedule for our, our various rooms in the project. And let me adjust my view here a little bit so that we can see, so we can easily see the PHPP as we go. Um, the additional ventilation worksheet is one of the wider ones. So there we go. All right. So we can kind of see our, our PHPP on the bottom here, our grasshopper scene on the upper right, obviously. So how am I going to set these? I'm going to use another new component. So I'll go to 01 uh, model. I'm going to come down here and choose the create room ventilation schedule. So I'm going to use the create room ventilation schedule. This is going to allow me to set up a schedule, right? just what it sounds like. And I'm going to output a PHPP vent schedule, which will get input to the PHPP vent schedule. So I'm going to have this output and connect to there. Now notice nothing happened. By default, it just uses 100%, 100%, 100%. But what we now have the ability to do is set the speed of the ERV when it's in high mode, the speed of the ERV when it's in medium mode, or the speed of the ERV when it's in low operation mode. Typically, these types of ERVs will have a high, medium, and low sort of um, uh, configuration high being like a, a boost. So if you're, if you're taking a shower or you're cooking and you need an hour of sort of higher than normal flow rate, you, we have a, a fan speed for that. So let's say that our, our um, fan speed at high is 100%. So our, our unit is working at the, the, the highest speed, the maximum speed that it can possibly work at. Whereas when it's at medium, maybe it's, at, maybe it's working at 50% of its maximum capacity. So maybe it's working at sort of not quite its, its full capacity there. And then at low, maybe if we're going to go on vacation, we want to be able to set it, set it way back to maybe 35% fan speed uh, uh, for, for low. Right? So we can actually set the speeds of our, our unit the same way that we would set them in some sort of a you know, um, uh, scheduler or control panel for, for the occupant there. Now notice that we don't have any updates into our PHPP just yet, and that's because we haven't yet done anything with this information. Remember, this is one of these pass-through components. So I took the honeybee zones in, and now I need to connect the output or the modified honeybee zones to the next link in the chain. The next link in the chain is way over here. It's my set zone, so I'm going to take this honeybee out, and I'm going to set it to the honeybee in on the next component here, and now notice that all of those fan speeds are flowing through properly. So as soon as we make that connection, as soon as we hook up that connection there, then our, our, our data is going to flow through properly. Now, this doesn't really matter at this point because notice that 100% of the time, the uh, ERV is functioning at 100% fan speed. So it's good that we set up our 50% normal fan speed and our 35% away mode, but we have to say how much of the time, how much of the year, it's going to operate at those, at those reduced flow rates. So just uh, sort of to, I don't know, we got to like tell a little story about our project here. Let's say, let's tell the story. Let's say that for one hour a day, one hour each day, so out of 24 hours, one hour, the system is running at high speed. So maybe one hour a day we are cooking or we're showering or we're doing something where we need to turn on the boost mode. And then the other 23 hours a day, the fan is working at 50%. So normal fan speed. Okay, so you, you have to tell a little story. You have to sort of figure out who's living in your building and, and what they're going to be doing, what their sort of lifestyle is like. 
So that's a reasonable story, though, right? The one hour a day at high high speed and, and 23 hours a day at sort of normal speed. So we need to put in a percentage of time for uh, operation at high and a percentage of time for operation at low. So we could do that calculation in a couple different ways. Let's just use a quick expression just to sort of make it easy. So let's say, let's say uh, 1 over 24. So one hour out of each 24, it's going to be operating at high speed. And so what is that? That's uh, it's about 4% of the time. So about 4% of the time, clean up here, it's operating at high speed. Now we're getting a warning. What does the warning say? The warning says, hey, 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 your operation times don't add up to 100%. Please correct the inputs. Well, that's true. So we put in 4% and notice down here in our PHPP, so 4% of the time we're operating at 100% fan speed, but that's it. The other 96% of the time, we don't know what we're doing. So we need to we need to correct that. So I'm going to I'm going to copy this expression over, and I'm just going to say 23 out of 24. So the other 23 hours a day, we're going to be operating at normal fan speed, and zero percent of the time we're going to be operating in away mode. So I'll go ahead and take that right out of the mix here, just for clarity. So 96 percent of the time. We're operating at 50% fan speed, and then 4% of the time, our occupants kick the, the, the unit, the system, up to 100% fan speed to get that boost mode operation. Right. Now, one thing you notice, so hopefully that all makes sense. Right, so that's our that's our scheduler. So that allows us to actually schedule when the system is going to be running. So when is the system going to be going to be operating? Now, one, one thing that you might have noticed here is that when we did that, when we, when we dropped this room ventilation flow rates component in, all of our flow rates changed over here. So all of the actual flow rates changed uh, pretty, pretty dramatically from the, from the values that we had, be had before. And that's because by default, this component is going to read the energy plus schedule and it's going to use and loads, and it's going to use the energy plus schedules and loads to determine the flow rates for those rooms. If we don't want it to do that, if we want to use the explicit values that we passed in, when did we pass in explicit values? We'll come into our Rhino scene here. Remember, we select a room, we go up to our set room data, and we have the ability to set our, our supply. So we said, I want 44 cubic meters per hour of, of um, supply, zero extract, zero transfer in the bedroom, 102. We'll notice down here, 102 bedroom has 120 cubic meters per hour of supply and 120 cubic meters per hour of extract. Very different than the 42. So where's 120 coming from? Well, the 120 is being determined based on the energy plus schedules and loads, which were applied back when we first built the honeybee zone. What does that mean? Let's zoom out a little bit here and let's pan over back, way back to the beginning when we first built our honeybee zone. So remember way back when we built our example zone, our, our very first honeybee zone here, we were asked to supply a program for the zone, a use type, and we did not. We didn't give it any information here. And because we didn't give it any information, the way that the Honeybee tool works is it's going to default to a small office usage. So we've been thinking we were building a little, a little residence here. Uh, all along, Honeybee thought we were building a small office. And so when we look at these flow rates down here, these are being determined using the small office schedule and loads. If we wanted to see that, if we wanted to see exactly what it's applying, let's make our grasshopper a little bigger here. We can do that in a couple different ways. Let's um, go to, where do we go to? Go to Honeybee. And we'll go into our programs here. And let's, um, let's get the zone energy plus loads. So let's get those uh, those loads. So we take our, our zone. This is just a viewer. Take our zone and we'll put this in here. And let's see what sort of ventilation is being applied to our project. So what do we have? We have a ventilation per area and a ventilation per person. And these are all, I think these are all, um, what are these? Cubic meters per second. This is per person. And this is um, uh, cubic meters cubed per second per square meter of floor area. Do I have that right? I should have checked. 
cubic meters per second per, yeah, cubic meters per second per quote. So this is ventilation per area. So for every square meter of floor area, we have a certain amount of airflow. And this is a certain amount of airflow per person in the space. Well, okay, the number of square meters, I can, I can understand that. We have a floor, and, and so we kind of know how big the space is. How many people are in the space? Well, we need to figure that out using a, a different component. So here we would actually get the schedules. And so we would need to see the schedule. So I'll plug my zone in to the schedules. And the schedules, um, the one that we're interested in is going to be this occupancy schedule. And so the occupancy schedule actually has a, you can see it's medium office building. And so we would, um, we would take that schedule and then we would take the load, which is number of people per area. So this is people per square meter. And we would combine those together. So we would it, it's a sort of variable number of people. It changes every hour. So we would need to calculate that over the course of the year, multiply that by the, the by this, uh, da, 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 right? It's, it's a kind of a complicated calculation, but it, the, the long and the short of it is um, Honeybee thinks we're building an office. And so those really high flow rates would be appropriate for an office, um, but not for a residence. Uh, so um, what we would kind of like to do is one of two things. We would either like to set the program to be a residence, or we would like to override the values of the program entirely uh, and sort of set our own using these um, IDF to pH tools. So one or the other. So let's look at, uh, see what our options are. Could we just set the program to a residence? Could we do that? Well, let's take a look at our Honeybee um, list of, of programs here. And um, we can use our, our programs list to filter. And so you know, there's our, our, by default, we just get the you know, small office. We have a bunch of office schedules and loads we could use, you know, all sorts of different space types. So come in here. And we've got retail, we've got mid-res apartments, schools, hotels, uh, warehouses, there's no residents. Yeah. This is one of the problems that we run into when trying to utilize this on a residential project. So there's no out-of-the-box residential schedule. The closest that we have is probably the small hotel. You could use small hotel guest room. That's probably close. That's prob probably the closest that we would have to a, a, a residence. Um, it's not the same, um, uh, but it's probably the closest. Uh, so we could pull the values there from the from the guest room. So we could let's um let me modify this so that we can kind of like watch our we can watch our our our, our elements here. Um, let's select a guest room. So I come here to my where's my item selector. So I come here, grab my item selector. And we'll change this to um, small hotel guest room. And then I will feed that in as the program for my, for my honeybee zone. And as I do that, notice that all of these numbers updated to reflect a, more like a, a you know, small hotel guest room. Now, these numbers are still much higher than we would typically see in a you know small residence, a high-performance residence, but um, you know they're close closer. So okay, so we could do it that way. We could we can use the 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 standard Energy Plus and, and sort of Honeybee tools here to to set those zone loads and and schedules. Um, but those are not perfect, uh, and again, there's no residence, uh, and we don't. Uh, it's a little bit complicated the way that the control works there. And, and I would rather just point at the thing, click on the thing, uh, whoops, not that one, and then set the zone load, or the, excuse me, the room loads here. I think that's easier. And so if I do that, I can tell the tool to ignore all of the Energy Plus loads. And I do that by saying what type of airflow input should we use? Should we use EP, Energy Plus, or should we use user determined? So if I input the flag user determined into my airflow input here, notice that down below all of my values get reset to the ones that I set in my Rhino scene. So 26.5, 26, or 27 rather. Right, so um, uh, if I want to use the values that I set in my Rhino scene, all I need to do is pass a flag to this component and say, okay, ignore the Energy Plus stuff for a minute. Just use the user-determined values. 
So hopefully that makes sense. The energy plus loads and, and schedules definitely gets a little bit complicated. So I know that's it's kind of a um, it's a brain full right there, but um, hopefully this makes sense. Um, the long and short of it is we are easily able to override those with our own explicit values by passing in a flag. So I can say use user determined values, and then we can set all of our schedules using our, our scheduler here. Um, and then this becomes part of our, our room configuration. Let me do a little bit of cleanup here just to sort of reposition stuff so it's centered. So we build our rooms. And then we set all the airflow on those rooms. We can either do it automatically using the Energy Plus calculators. So if you're doing non-residential projects, that's probably exactly the way that you would want to do it. Or we can do it using these um, simplified uh, residential controllers that are going to kind of match more closely the typical PHPP pattern. So I think we'll um, we'll cut this one off here, and um, we'll come back in the we'll come back in the next uh, the next video, and we'll talk about how we can sort of reconcile these new schedules. So one of the problems with doing it this way is that we have set our PHPP using these user determined schedules, and so the question then arises: How am I going to make my Energy Plus match those user determined schedules? Right, I have to somehow update my schedules or or um, my my program information there. So we'll talk about that in the next uh, the next video when we come back, and um, I'll uh, look forward to seeing you then. All right, thanks everyone.